Whether you're rocking a short and sweet pixie cut or a ravishing Rapunzel look or something in between, it's clear that the hair on your head is an important part of your overall aesthetic. It matters so much that people will pay hundreds of dollars or thousands for fancy wigs if they aren't satisfied with their current crop or if they don't have any hair to begin with. But if it's so crucial to us as humans, how is it that most of us don't even know how it grows? All of your hair from the top of your head to your little hobbit toes grows out of teeny little pockets inside your skin called hair follicles. Once you're born in the Shire, you will already have all the hair follicles you'll need for the rest of your life, which is roughly five million of them. And 100,000 of those are on your sweet halfling noggin. Ah, yes. I do desperately wish we were all hobbits living in Middle Earth, and I don't feel like I should apologize for that. Anyway, hair bulbs, aka roots, form at the very bottom of the follicles and are fed with a lovely diet of blood and more blood and mmm, so much blood, which contains nutrients and proteins. Once they feel nice and full, the root will sprout into the hair shaft, the stuff that we like to run our fingers through when we're flirting with our crush. Now here's where things get a little weird. You know how it doesn't hurt when you get a haircut, but it really hurts when your little cousin yanks on your hair? That's because, plot twist, your hair shaft has been dead this whole time. Dun dun dun. That's right. The only living part of the hair is at the root, which is down beneath the scalp. It's only when the hair begins to poke out through the skin that the hair shaft isn't able to get as many nutrients and therefore loses its will to live. This also means that your hair does not grow out of the ends. It grows from the root, and the root pushes out all the dead stuff, which then becomes the hair we know and love. To get an even better sense of how hair grows, we gotta walk through three distinct stages. The first is the antigen stage, aka the active phase, which is what I was just talking about. You know, the whole nutrients thing and the growing thing. It can last anywhere from two to eight years, which is like a crazy long range, right? That's because this stage is largely controlled by genetics. So if you're naturally predisposed to having a longer antigen stage, something closer to eight years, that means you'll generally have longer hair and vice versa. That's why you might see some of your friend's hair growing like a weed while you're struggling to make it past your shoulders. This also explains why we aren't walking around looking like Shih Tzus with hella long Gandalf beards grown out of our arms and our legs. You shall not pass! The hair found on other parts of our bodies has very short antigen stages, so they never really grow past a certain length. Go ahead and take a look at your head hair right now. About 90% of all that hair you see is in the antigen phase. And while it'll grow about a centimeter per month, there will also be some hairs that are ready to call it quits. That brings us to stage two, the catagen stage. Meow. Sadly, despite its name, no felines are involved in this part. This is the transition stage of the growing process, where the hair bulb is cut off from nutrients at the follicle. It's not as traumatic and sudden as getting cut off at the clerb since it takes about two to six weeks. And in fact, you won't even notice when it's begun because it'll still look like the hair is growing. But in reality, the root is just pushing out whatever is left over beneath the scalp. Once it's all run out, then the hair is geared up for the third and final phase, the telogen phase. Over the course of two to three months, the hair is prepping itself to leave the follicle forever. When you're shampooing your hair or giving it a nice comb and a whole bunch of hair comes out, those are telogen hairs. And you lose about 25 to 100 each dang day. Whew, now we can all stop worrying so much. Shedding these hairs is more than natural. It's important. Typically, once a hair that's had its fun is kicked out of the follicle, a new hair bulb can grow in there. Now, if you're sitting there lamenting the fact that you probably have a genetically short antigen stage, you should know that compared to everything else on and in your body, hair grows super fast. The only part of your body that grows faster is bone marrow, which you can't even put up in a cute ponytail, so who even cares, right? JK, JK, bone marrow is very important. Hair also grows faster on biological boys than on biological girls, which is why Frodo, I mean, Elijah Wood, and other men need haircuts way more often. However, men also have to deal with weakened hair follicles as they age. Yeah, I'm talking about the B word, balding. And as we have said many times on past Pretty Smart episodes, health, hormones, and hair damage can all affect how your hair grows. It's all connected. Even though we are nowhere near as furry as a hobbit or even an elf, with long flowing hair and beautiful pointy ears. Ah, sorry, I gotta stop binge watching all of the Lord of the Rings movies. Yes, we are not that hairy, but hair is a critical part of how we present ourselves to the world. And that's why it's important to know how it grows. Next time you go to your local hair salon, you can impress everyone there with your in-depth knowledge. Just make sure you give a strong hair flip after you finish blowing their minds. <laughs>